Hello, you're all very welcome to BMS 525 Clinical Immunology. My name is Philip Alsop, I'm your module coordinator. And my email address is pj.alsop at ulcer.ac.uk. Now, of course, folks, there is a, 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 a mail uh, function in Learn that you can contact me through. But my advice would be if you want to contact me to use this address, you're more likely to get a quicker response. Um, so I'm the module coordinator, but I'm also joined by an experienced team of e-tutors, um, including Mary Therese Walsh and William Crow. This may change, but the outlook for this module is that each student will be allocated to a group and an e-tutor will, will um, help facilitate your learning experience. Okay, so you'll find out which group you're in at the start of the module. Now, in terms of how the module will be delivered, um, there will be lectures available every week for seven weeks covering uh, innate immunity to adaptive immunity uh, and progressing onward from there to the more clinical aspects of immunology, such as transplantation, immunodeficiencies and hypersensitivity. So you'll have a lecture to, to, to um, listen to every week for seven weeks. Now, the outlook for this module is that you look, you read, and you uh, listen to the lectures that are available. Then you take this information, identify which aspects of the, the material that you're finding difficult or that you would like clarity, and then you use the discussion boards to raise any issues. Now, the purpose of the discussion boards is to initiate discussion not just between the tutors, the module coordinator and the students, but also between the students. We would like you to engage in the discussion board so that any queries or questions that you have can be viewed and appreciated by all members of the, the student cohort. Um, if you have any uh, personal queries, then you can, of course, contact your e-tutor or myself through email. Now, the outlook again is that you learn the material and you raise issues with the discussion board. And then we have the, the, the alternate approach as well, where we have scheduled tutorials. Now, the outlook for these tutorials is that you have read and engaged with the material so that when we facilitate these tutorials, that you're not seeing this material for the first time and that actually you're using these tutorial sessions to uh, reinforce the material that you've already engaged with. And the tutorials are also a great opportunity for you to directly ask questions and to, to get some sort of interaction between you and the tutors. In previous years, the tutorials has been an excellent opportunity for the students to really get their grips with the material and to get some reassurance from the tutor specifically on uh, certain aspects of the course. So that's how the um, delivery will, will be facilitated. Um, but just to be reassured that myself and each tutors generally will get back to your queries relatively quick. And we will we hope that you have a pleasant experience uh, in learning immunology. Immunology is a very difficult subject. Um, and if you don't engage, then you'll find it very, very difficult to pass this module. Um, I have to reinforce that, that concept because um, if history has told us that if you don't engage with the tutors, if you don't engage with the material, you're going to find it very difficult to pass. Okay, so please try and engage. So how is the module assessed? So we have coursework and a final exam. So the coursework makes up 40% of this module and it's composed of two assignments, each worth 20%. And we'll cover this in a little bit more detail in the, the slides to follow. The final exam is worth 60%. And this is the aspect of the module that people tend to find mo most difficult. But we'll try and help you with this process by providing tutorials leading up to the exam so that you have some grasp or concept of what is expected of you for that exam. Now, in terms of assignment one, um, it's a, a, an, a practical um, 
that's provided to you um, based on an ELISA. So essentially you'll be provided with data that's been obtained from an ELISA experiment and we'll expect you to take the data, um, interrogate the data and give some reflection on the data. So you'll be, you'll be provided with these results and it could be a range of clinical cases um, but it's most likely to be based on uh, diagnosis of celiac disease. And in addition to analyzing the ELISA results, you'll be required to answer questions on the underlying principles of the ELISA itself, but also the immunology of the disease. Um, but just be mindful that, you know, as this is an online delivery platform, there's no actual physical practical element to BMS 525. There is a link provided for virtual ELISA, um, which redirects you to a website. But this is only to familiarize yourself with the, the laboratory procedure that would take place. And I want to reinforce that whilst you're provided with this link, it doesn't contribute to the assignment. It's just for your own learning purposes. So um, just to be clear on that. Assignment two is based on, so is based on flow cytometry. And you'll be provided with results from a flow cytometric uh, analysis, and you'll be required to comment on the likelihood that the patients uh, are infected with HIV and to, to comment on the associated prognosis of the patients. In addition to providing analysis for, for, of the flow cytometric data, you'll be required to answer questions on the underlying principle of the flow cytometry and the underlying immunology of HIV infection and AIDS. Um, and just to, 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 I suppose, provide a bit of um, reassurance, you will be provided with a, a, a presentation on, flow, on the flow cytometer and also um, HIV infection. But I must, um, I must um, emphasize that this presentation will be released for a number of days and then it will no longer be available. Now, you may ask yourself why is the, the release of the material um, only periodic? It's to avoid plagiarism um, and just to reiterate that the purpose of providing this presentation is to help you get the basic concepts, um, not as a source of information to answer the questions. Okay. Now, the exam. The exams were 60%, okay? And as I said before, this is the aspect of the module that students tend to fall down on. Um, and the written exams were 60% of the overall module mark. And you must be mindful that you have to pass both the coursework element and the exam element. So if you fail the exam element, then you have to reset it, okay? Now, the exam structure is that you have three sections, A, B, and C. Section A is worth 15%, section B is worth 35%, and section C is worth 50%. So section A is composed of 12 multiple choice questions, with each uh, question worth 1.25%. Section B is, involves seven short answer questions, each worth 5% each. So section B in total is worth 35%. Section C is two essay questions, um, each worth 25%. And you, you'll get to choose two essays from a choice of five. Okay. So this is how your exam will look. Um, and given the COVID environment that we're living in, um, you'll have 24 hours to complete the exam. Um, and you'll be required to submit it uh, as a result. Another thing to reiterate, folks, is plagiarism. Please be mindful that you have to submit this through Turnitin. And if you plagiarize, you will be deducted marks. In fact, any, um, any component of your submitted exam that has chunks of information copied and pasted will not be considered and and my previous experience, it generally results in a student failing. Okay, so be in this environment, uh, be mindful of plagiarism. Okay, 
So you've 24 hours to do the exam and you submit through Turnitin. This is an example of how your MCQ will look. And just to, um, just to confirm that the MCQ aspect of the exam will be provided through Blackboard Learn. So what will happen is you will um, have a link to a Blackboard Learn MCQ test. It will, that link will be available for 24 hours. But once you start that MCQ test, you will have 30 minutes to complete it. Complete it. And once you start the exam, you have to finish it. There are no exceptions. Okay. So the, the test is available for 24 hours, but once you start it, you have 30 minutes to complete. Okay. And in that MCQ test, um, there, there will be no ability to go back to previous questions. Once you submit an answer for a question, that's it submitted and, and you need to be linked for that. But we'll talk about a bit more about this later in the module. And as I say, we'll provide a, a exam preparation tutorial just so that you are um, well versed in how to deal with this. So section B of the exam is seven short answer questions. It might look something like this. Give an overview of pattern recognition receptors, including several examples. So there are the type of short answer questions that we will be expecting you to answer. And there will be a word limit on this um, in around 100 to 150 words. And the key to providing a good answer for this section exam is your ability to convey the immunological information in a concise manner. Okay. And again, the exam preparation tutorial will help you prepare effectively from this in a sense that we, we would hope that you would have an idea of what level of material is required for this section. Okay. So section B is worth 35% of the exam. Now section C is the bulky aspect of the exam. And that's where you'll have to answer two essay questions out of a selection of five. Again, there will be a word limit on this. And this section, generally speaking, is where we have plagiarism issues. So please be mindful um, that you have to complete these essays in your own words. Okay. So these are just a series of examples of exam questions. And again, I would hope that the exam preparation tutorial will enable you to have an understanding of what we require from these essay answers. So that's the final exam. Um, so we've dealt with coursework, we've dealt with the exam, and we're moving on to what I would deem to be probably the most important aspect of your learning experience, which are tutorials. They'll be delivered through Blackboard Learn Collaborate. You'll be sent a link that will bring you directly to your tutorial. And generally speaking, it will begin at half six in the evening and will last for around an hour. Now, the time, um, the time and date can vary, but you, um, you, you'll be, this will be communicated to you by the e tutor. Okay. Um, so the outlook for tutorials is that you should read the material, as I've said before, and my, in order for you to get the, the most out of the tutorial, I would advise you to um, propose um, questions or propose topics that you would like the tutor to focus on prior to the tutorial. This will make the tutorial more um, free flowing and make a uh, make a more make it address issues that you want to deal with. Otherwise, the tutor has no. Um, idea what aspect of the the material you would like to focus on. Okay, folks. And again, feedback from previous years uh, has been that the tutorials has been the real um, silver lining on the, the delivery for this module. So please try and engage with it. Um, so some uh, actions for you would be Make every effort to attend tutorials uh, delivered through Collaborate Ultra. And just to reiterate, in previous years, there has been a notable correlation between the lack of attendance and participation in tutorials and the risk of failing the final exam. 
Folks, immunology is a very difficult module, um, and you you know you you need to engage with it in order to give the best chance of passing. Um, and again, in terms of getting the most out of the module, read the notes that are available and try to ensure that you're prepared for the tutorial. Try not to come to, to the tutorial having not engaged with the notes. Otherwise, you'll find it very hard to, to keep up in the, the tutorial. Okay, folks? Um, and in terms of the reading list, um, if you go to the link provided in the Blackboard Learn um, page, and follow the, 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 the module reading list. You'll also find access to previous papers on the library page, um, which will help you to get an idea of what sort of questions have been posed in previous years. Um, another thing to consider is that, you know, there are um, self-test options um, available, and there all are also other recordings and previous tutorials from previous years that may help you, um, may help with your learning experience. Um, okay, and in terms of contact, so lecture one will be focused on an introduction to immunology and an overview of immune cells, tissues, and organs. Um, lecture two will be focused on the innate immune response with a particular focus on inflammation, phagocytosis, complement, and wound healing. Then in lecture three, we start to move into what would, many would consider the most more difficult aspects of immunology, which are, would be the adaptive response. So we'll be dealing with the importance of memory, specificity, antigens, antibodies, um, and, and antigen presentation, um, and the molecular aspects of immunology. In lecture four, we'll start to deal with, well, how does the adaptive response deal with specific pathogens? We'll deal with that. Then lecture five, we start to deal with immune dysfunction with a particular focus on autoimmunity and hypersensitivity. So that would be like your food allergens and that type of thing. And then uh, lecture six will be transplantation and some of the immunological complications associated with that. And lastly, immunodeficiency disorders. Okay, folks, so um, I hope you have a pleasant experience. Generally speaking, people who, uh, who engage with immunology tend to have a, a really enjoyable learning experience. Um, and as I say, the best way to get the most out of this module is to engage. Myself and uh, the e-tutors are here to engage and we will help you as much as we can. Um, so I just like to wish you all the very best of luck and just to remind you that if you want a quick answer the best way to contact me is directly through my email address okay folks let's let's have a nice nice learning experience and uh good luck thank you